Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you my top two underrated coloured pencil techniques. I am Kirsty Rebecca and I make drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow even if you're just starting out. The first tip is my favourite way to blend coloured pencils to make the colours more vibrant and rich and painterly. This technique also blends away most of the graininess and it's a much faster way than applying tons of layers or burnishing. The second technique is the perfect solution to adding details like whiskers and highlights on top of your coloured pencil work, the archival way. So diving right into the first technique, do you spend hours or days layering and layering your coloured pencil work or pressing really hard until you finally fill up the white grain of the paper? Are you looking for a faster way of achieving these results? Well the answer is to use solvent. Using solvent to dissolve the pigment into the tooth or the little grooves of the paper can dramatically speed up your process and create a nice, rich, vibrant result much more quickly. You can use this technique with any brand of coloured pencil you have as well, so it's not limited to one type of coloured pencil. I use the Art Spectrum Odorless Solvent, but you can use Odorless Mineral Spirits or Turpentine or Gamsol. If you're worried about the toxicity of solvent, there's also natural solvents like Zestit that you can use as well. I keep a small bit of the solvent in a little jar so I don't contaminate my main bottle of solvent if there's any pigment left on my brush. You can also let the pigment settle to the bottom of the jar overnight and then tip out the clean solvent into another jar to reuse. I always keep the lid on my jar throughout my project unless I'm actually physically using the solvent because you obviously don't want to breathe in excess chemicals unnecessarily. I would also recommend opening a window or the doors just to make sure that you have some airflow as well. I just use a generic oil or acrylic brush but you can use whatever brush you prefer. I'd recommend a brush that's not too soft so don't use a watercolour brush but not too hard either like those really cheap bristle brushes. I keep two or three different sized brushes aside that I only use with the solvent because they do tend to get a little bit damaged so I don't use an expensive brush either. Some people also use a blending stump or a cotton tip and I haven't really used those personally but you can give them a try if you like. If you're working on a sanded paper or pastel mat the brushes tend to splay out and get damaged even more quickly but I've been using the same brush for a long time now even though it looks damaged it still works totally fine. So there's a few things you need to know before actually starting to apply the solvent to your drawing. The solvent technique works differently on different papers, so make sure that you do a test piece before you go into your project with solvent. The paper you choose needs to be able to take a wet medium, because obviously solvent is a liquid. I either use Clairefontaine pastel mat or a smooth watercolour paper, but you can use your favourite paper, just make sure that it can take wet mediums and that you do a test piece first. You also need to make sure that you have enough pigment down on your paper before you blend out with solvent. So you can't just do one light layer of pencil and then blend it because there won't be enough pigment for the solvent to actually blend it together. You need to do a few light layers of coloured pencil first and also make sure that you do light layers using circular motions or long ovals rather than scribbly strokes and don't press too hard with your pencils. If you try and press hard to get that pigment down faster, you could actually leave pencil strokes that will be hard to blend away with the solvent, so they may show up towards the end of your piece. So making sure that you build up your layers lightly will make it blend more smoothly. When you're ready to go in with the solvent, make sure that you dab off the excess solvent onto a cloth or paper towel so that you don't apply too much to your artwork. Depending on the paper that you use, you can use different amounts of solvent, so make sure that you do a test piece to find out how much solvent you actually need to blend the pigment nicely. Some papers will actually leave like a grey ring or a stain around the area that you've used solvent on if you use too much. I haven't actually had this problem with the watercolour paper or the pastel mat though, but I've seen it happen on other papers. When you're applying the solvent, it's a good idea to work in small sections at a time, and if you want something to be smooth like skin, Blend it in small circular motions and just work very slowly. What the solvent actually does is that it breaks down the pigment and dissolves it together to create a smoother blend and fill in the little white gaps of the paper. This technique is an archival way to blend your coloured pencils. I've heard other artists try and use baby oil or like vodka or Vaseline, but I wouldn't recommend using any of those products because they aren't really designed to be used with art, so you never really know what might happen to your artwork in the future when you use those products. You want to wait 15 to 30 minutes for your paper to dry before you add more layers on top. 
If you don't let it dry completely, you may damage the paper by adding more layers on top of a damp surface, so make sure that you wait a while to make sure it's completely dry. Some papers also take longer than others to dry as well, so keep that in mind. The great thing about using solvent in comparison to the burnishing method is that you can add more layers on top quite easily, especially if you're using sanded paper or pastel mat. If you don't know what burnishing is, it's basically when you push really hard with your pencil to smooth out the layers underneath. So a lot of people create layers and layers and layers of colored pencil and then in their last layer they'll get a lighter color or a colorless blender and then push the pigment around so that you're blending the previous layers together smoothly. When you're using solvent, you can actually add lighter colors on top of darker colors much easier than the layering or burnishing techniques because you've dissolved the pigment into the grooves of the paper rather than flattening the paper by pushing hard. So instead of burnishing and crushing the tooth of the paper, this method of blending with solvent means you're dissolving the pigment into your paper, which will allow more layers on top. If you use pastel mat or a sanded paper, it will be even easier to add those lighter colors on top of the darker colors than if you used watercolor paper. Before I show you how I add bright whiskers or highlights, if you want to follow along with my longer real-time tutorials where I talk you through every step of the process, then Patreon might be the solution for you. For a small amount per month, you'll have access to every tutorial that I've previously uploaded on your chosen tier level in a variety of mediums like pastel, colored pencil, graphite, watercolor, and more. You will also have access to the original reference photo, a traceable outline, and a list of supplies that I'm using so you really can follow along every step of the way. My tutorials don't skip any stages or cut out any important parts of the process, and I will share all of my secrets to help you improve. Every month I will upload brand new tutorials to the library so you can grow and develop your drawing and painting skills and take your art to the next level. You can also join in on our members chat group where you can ask questions or advice or share your artwork and talk to other members in the Patreon community. The link is in the description if you want to check it out. The second technique is the perfect solution to adding details like whiskers and highlights on top of your colored pencil work, the archival way. You might have seen people use gel pens, acrylic paints, gouache, correction fluid or even paint pens to add highlights to colored pencil drawings. In case you weren't aware, none of those options are archival. They may be light fast and archival separately, but when you put them on top of colored pencil, there's potential for them to chip off in the future. If you're selling your work or you don't want your work to be damaged over time, you want to use archival and light fast materials. The only product on the market that I know of that is archival with colored pencils to add those highlights is the products from the brand Brush and Pencil. I use two products for this technique. The first is the titanium white powder and the second is the touch up texture, which is a liquid. If you mix these two products together, they create a paint like consistency that you can use to paint on top of your artwork. If you want a more opaque mixture, you can just add more of the titanium white powder. And if you want it to be less white or more transparent, use more liquid. So you basically just mix these into a little palette on the side until it's a smooth mixture without any lumps and then you can apply it to your artwork. There are other archival ways of adding whiskers or highlights, like indenting your paper, scraping away the top layers, or working around every whisker. And I don't like to risk damaging my paper by indenting it or scraping it. And I also don't wanna spend that much time working around every single whisker. So this is the way that I add those light details and whiskers. Both of these products are archival to use with colored pencil. They're actually created specifically for colored pencil artists to use, and there are no other products like them on the market. The titanium white powder is the same pigment used in colored pencils, but in powder form, and you can use it by itself to apply lighter areas to your work if you want to. The titanium white powder by itself actually works better on sanded paper because it sticks to the paper better, but the mixture that I'm using today can actually be used on any surface over your colored pencil work. You can also use the touch up texture liquid, which is clear by itself on any areas you just need a little bit more tooth back on your paper so you can add more colors on top. So this mixture dries quite quickly, so don't mix up too much. I always tend to mix up too much and end up wasting it because you really don't need that much anyway. The good thing about this mixture is that when it dries, you can actually go on top of it with your colored pencils and add more layers and adjust the colors. So if you don't want something to be pure white, you can actually glaze other colors there as well. 
Make sure that when you're finished with your artwork that you store it or ship it flat until it's framed. You can't roll up this piece or bend it because there is potential for it to crack. Aliona, who is actually the inventor of these products, recommends using a mounted surface or a rigid surface to work on. That way there's no chance of it moving or cracking. But if you keep it flat, I've done it on a lot of different types of artwork and I've kept them all flat and they've been fine. But this product is actually a lifesaver. You can use it to apply whiskers or highlights or any details that you can't get with your normal colored pencils. There's a playlist on the screen of some other colored pencil tutorials that I thought you might find useful. So click on that and I'll see you over there.